you eat your young. Those successful, talented educators, you go at them. Oh, you work so hard. I can't tell you how many people work so hard to make sure our team, and still are working so hard in Hartford right now to destroy the work that we did at Capital Prep, is because they need to show that successful schools are an anomaly and they can't be replicated. And so what they do is they set up systems where I was in a board meeting and a current board member in Hartford told me that he would never, it's a Latino, if I remember his name, I never committed his name to memory, he's a short guy, uh, went to Trinity, um, I'll remember your name, don't you worry about it, Cotto. He said in a board meeting that despite the fact that we had the highest graduation rate, highest college going rate, and even the highest daily attendance, and he even said, even though you have a great school, we will never allow you to replicate here in Hartford. Why, you ask? I don't know. This Latino male said that our kids were different. I said, what? What do you mean by different? They're black, Latino, and poor. Why would you say that? Well, that's not really what I mean. He's a union sympathizer. All he cares about are the teachers' unions. He doesn't care about your kids. If he did care about your kids, he'd be fighting to replicate the most successful schools. Take capital prep out of it. It breakthrough. You got university. You got sports and medical sciences. Why are there not six or seven of those schools? Why do those schools have waiting lists? Do you know why? Because the teachers' unions and the weak leadership that they have there have the lane because too many of the principals are not standing up and fighting for their schools and the people within them. And then what happens is you end up driving out talent. I have met some of the most talented educators in some of the lowest performing schools and school systems in America. You can go to Buffalo and meet some of these teachers and they're just amazing. Amazing. Some principals who are amazing. Cincinnati, Cleveland, go to these failing school systems and you will see places where these people, Detroit, I mean, can straight teach. Amazing. But what happens after a while is they get tired of fighting just to be able to teach, just to be able to do their job. And so they peel off. So these failed school systems actually become a fantastic training ground for some of the most talented educators in America. Yet those talented educators leave because they're tired of it. They don't want to sit and fight and, 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 and beg to just be able to teach kids or just be able to replicate or empty their waiting list or do any of the above. See, we have to realize that the systems that are designed to fail are designed to fail in large part because the people of color are the children who attend them. And as long as children of color are the ones who are the majorities in those classrooms, in this country, we're going to keep letting them fail. You are complicit in the destruction of black and Latino kids because you don't do your homework. You don't take the time to go after Board of Education members who say that they're against magnet schools who send their kids to magnet schools or legislators who say they're against charter schools who send their kids to charter schools. You don't look at the system and fundamentally ask the question, yeah, why is it that we have these successful schools that are not being replicated? Why are we falling for the okie doke? Why are we so simple-minded in our politics? Why? Because you live in the suburbs and you can be. Because you send your kid to suburban schools and you can say you're so pro-public school because your public schools are good. Because they're largely white, they're upper middle class, you have no blood in, 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 the, in the game. You're not the ones who are going to lose.